Hayes Printers. Excited to talk to you about inflation, deflation, what's coming, what's ahead of us, how to prepare. And I'm especially thrilled that we will discuss today a 200 trillion opportunity here. And not just that, but we are also ready to, to execute on that. If you're following this channel, this is the strategy anyways. And um, here is the, the mastermind number one, Katie Wood, who is the chief investment officer of ARC. And she is a great inspiration. We learn macro from Raoul Paul here on the channel. And we learn disruptive trends from Katie Wood. These are the two demigods of this channel since many years. And I have to say, Katie Wood is definitely one of the smartest investors on the planet. Uh, and she is a reason why I got into investment and why some of the investments that I've been co-investing with her, basically learning from her, studying her and duplicating her portfolios have brought us to where we are today. For example, Tesla was something that, uh, as you know, uh, we have quintupled um, together with her and her conviction. Because at times I was like, hmm, I'm not sure, should I hold? And I was reading specifically what Katie Wood and other um, masterminds really were publishing. So she has got it right many times. Right now she, she's, she's getting hammered. Her portfolios are getting hammered. Minus 30%. And so everybody right now, Oh, I told you, look, 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 she's wrong. I don't think she's wrong. I think she's right. But I want you to have the information to take the right decision. And especially, uh, how can you prepare for what's coming? Because this is the opposite of... 99% of analysts and industry commentators are saying exactly the opposite than what she is saying and that's why let's dive deeper. So right now the question is, hey, your funds are down 30%. Are you in a bubble, Katie Woods, with your innovation stuff, with your growth stocks? And she answers, um, First, no, we are not in a bubble. We are in deep value, once again. Plus, on the other side, who is in a bubble here? Let's go through some numbers and see what is really a bubble here. So, first of all, she is concerned and that she is writing this paper that uh, some of her clients are selling too quickly. They are selling right now and they, instead of having temporary losses of 30%, they might have permanent losses of 30%, which for her is concerning. And that's why she starts this paper right here today, the 17th of December 2021. And um, I've just read it right now and highlighted it and I'm sharing it here um, fresh as, I, as I'm reading it. Rebound opportunities. So this minus 30% according to her research, and it's one of the best research teams on the planet, institutional grade research, that is available to us, by the way. And um, she says, we are perfectly positioned for rebound. Of course, it's minus 30%. Of course, everybody right now is ducking and covering and hiding again into the dividend stocks and into the safe, safe places. But first, what they think is safe, was safe 10 years ago, is not safe anymore. Times have changed. Second, um, are you prepared for the rebound? Because the rebound will be amazing. So she says, if we look at five years from now, and that's the difference, of course, because most of us are looking for the next three months, right? And so three months, sure, there is no rebound. But she says, let's look at five years. Innovation is not in a bubble, it solves real problems. And not just that, but the rate of change has been accelerated um, during the pandemic and now endemic. And if we look at the next five to 10 years, she is more bullish than ever on her highest conviction stocks. Uh, 
and she says the market will rebound and her picks will deliver a 40% compound annual rate over the next 5 to 10 years. And they have been doing so historically. Just right now, they are not. Why? Let's look at it. She says there is a situation of undervalued assets right now. Over the last 11 months, there has been a correction, and the correction has hit hardest the innovation stocks. Uh, she says these stocks are undervalued. They are in deep value zone. Now, she brings three examples. Zoom, DocuSign, and Teladoc. So, Zoom, as you know, is what most people are using to talk to their, to their people right now and um, the annualized revenue dur during um, the current quarters in percentage change it's up 58 percent just the price is down 68 percent so the price does not reflect the fundamentals she stays with the fundamentals and she says the price is based on psychology of the markets right now markets are fearful and they are rotating into the safer place so for example a safe place is a dividend stock it is it has growth already and it is paying quarterly or monthly to its shareholders right so it's a safe place you always get your four percent six percent now from that place there will be no innovation because dividend means i have no idea what to invest it i gave it right back to my shareholders whereas a growth stock says every penny i will reinvest into the future for example amazon at the beginning everybody was like oh amazon is not making any profits and not making any profits and for 10 years amazon was not making profits why because they were thinking growth and when you think growth you don't think dividends you think how can i put every penny into the future creating the future creating a moat that will defend my business creating the supply chain infrastructure that will make us um, even faster, stronger and more defendable. So Zoom down 68%, but the fundamentals are strongest than DocuSign, which people used to sign, sign off docs uh, on their iPads and, and, and phones and, and desktops. DocuSign is down 56%, but the quarterly revenue growth rate is 42%. So she says fundamentals, super strong. It's just the psychology of the current investors that's uh, in another direction. They're going to the safe places. But if you buy this, that's a delta you can expect to rebound if it rebounds, right? So then we have Teladoc, where you can meet your doctor and have your health stuff regulated from home, which course during um, pandemics and demics and lockdowns was was a very relevant thing it's down minus 70 percent but the fundamentals are strong the percentage change is 188 percent and the quarterly revenue growth rate year over year of 80 percent 80 percent google has 40 percent right now so strong fundamentals according to her research but the psychology of the market looks at other things. It's rotating into safety, and we can expect that to continue over the next three months, as we have been discussing here on the channel many times. The next three months will be um, markets being fearful, so they will rotate into more dividend stocks than growth stocks. So if you have growth stocks, they will be hammered, as we are experiencing right now. But now, should we sell? She says no. And I know how tough it is because I hold most of the stocks that she has in her portfolio. And over the last months, it was tough to hold on to some of them. And I didn't hold all of them. So I was one of these uh, who, who sells prematurely, maybe at a loss. Um, for example, I've been selling Vertex. And I think it was, it, it was a mistake because they they... They are rebounding right now as we speak. So 
Short term versus long term. What's our short term fast horses versus can we hold something five years? Mid February 2022, many broad based market indexes have scaled to record highs. But、uh, in the process, rotating away from growth stocks towards value and defensive stocks. So, investors, institutions are moving from risk to de risked value stocks, right?、Um, and the fear of inflation is not just. Uh, a short term problem, but the fear is that inflation is related to more of a long term problem, which is the excessive monetary and fiscal policy responses to the coronavirus. So, if your hypothesis is, well, inflation is because of current supply chain bottlenecks globally, then that's a temporary thing. But if your hypothesis is, Inflation is because we have been printing too much money globally, then this is a thing that will not be over in a couple months. And it seems that the markets think of the second hypothesis, and that's why they will even rotate even more into safe assets. And, and so growth stocks will be hit even more over the next months. Now, liquidity first. There is another thing which is. Quant strategy 70% of US trading right now is done by machines, and the machines have just two orders. and It says sell everything that has no liquidity because liquidity is what makes you stay in the game. So, when the game gets tough and you have no liquidity, you're out of the game. That's it,、uh, no additional round for you. Game over. That's why the bots are programmed. Um, in 2021, to just、uh, sell everything that has not enough liquidity to stay in the game during tough times.、Uh, but she says these orders are wrong because these bots that just look at liquidity have been selling off by 50 to 75 percent or growth stock, but they were wrong because. You are sacrificing long term for short term here because the underlying technologies of these assets that they have been selling are critical to tackling the coronavirus genomic sequencing, synthetic biology, mRNA technology, machine learning, molecular diagnostic. This is what the world really needs、uh, right now and coming forward. So I love how she, how she is very clear in this paper. She says, Look, dividends are a Pavlovian response. People are basically traumatized and,、uh, and they just look backwards and go safe. But the future is forward. The future is DNA sequencing, robotics, energy storage, artificial intelligence, and blockchain. And when these five forces come together, we will have a much stronger upside than the current squeeze looks like. And especially. What she is highlighting, and we on this channel are highlighting, is the power of decentralization. And this is strong. She says, creative destruction, which is happening right now, will even involve the fangs. So even Facebook, Amazon, etc., will be、uh, in harm's way, will be damaged by the new coming decentral.、Um, Technologies, blockchain technologies, the conversions and the conversions of those, if you see blockchain technology converging with artificial intelligence,、uh, and the so called metaverse attempts to destroy the roles of centralized data aggregators, ceding economic power to creators and consumers, which is also our、uh, analysis on this channel. So, Let's look at the price to earnings. PE during past recessions, the US economy has been shrinking down PE price to earning ratios of the SP 500 to 6.8. So 6.8 times earnings was the price of the assets. So in recession, it goes down to 6.8. If we look at today, I've been checking today's 
um, PE multiples, we have now price to earning ratios for the S&P 500 of 26. So who is in a bubble here? <laughs> Equities markets are in a bubble 26 times earnings is the valuation of an asset of, an S of the S&P 500 right now as we speak December 17 and the Nasdaq even even worse 127 percent now sometimes there are network effects in there and there is a reason to do it but if we are talking bubble who is in a bubble here bonds even worse than a bubble bonds are just doing <laughs> super super bad so there is not even we cannot even talk risk uh, when we talk bonds because they have negative yields or just negligible uh, yields. So there is not even a reason to talk here. Uh, they were really bad, but they are getting worse. And then so the 10 year Treasury bond and the two year Treasury note has flattened from 159 basis points to 80 basis points. Well, and there is a wall of worry. Now, her critics say, well, it reminds me of the internet bubble. Everybody was saying, yeah, 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 this will be huge, but it wasn't huge. She says the difference to the internet bubble is there was no wall of worry. Right now, there is a wall of worry, and the strongest bull markets do climb a wall of worry. And that has created enormous uh, opportunities. And right now, this is what happens. The wall of worry is here. She says, not just there is no inflation coming. She says deflation is coming. Let's look at deflation. So inflation means prices go up with the same um, coin, whatever it is, you can buy less. And deflation means with the same coin, you can buy more. So where did we see inflation the last 10 years? Every currency. Pick, enter your national currency that is inflationary. With the same coin, with one US dollars, you can buy less right now than 10 years ago. If you look at deflation, uh, where can you see it right now? Bitcoin. With one Bitcoin, you can buy more today than 10 years ago. So that's deflation. And of course, we have been talking on this channel that at some point, energy will be free. So cheap that everybody has energy. And this is where we will see completely different global economic situation. But she says, According to Wright's law that uh, she is is applying, and I'm happy to do a video on Wright's law if you want, just this one is getting too long. Uh, genomics, the costs for genomics will go down 28% to 40%. Batteries will go down 28 to 50% uh, in the next time. What's at a rate of 60% per year is, for example, the costs of training of artificial intelligence. And not just this, these are dramatic cost declines, but not just this, we will have also the convergence of different S-curves, different technologies starting right now. And when they are in the middle of the S-curve, in the strongest part of the S-curve, and they will be uh, enforcing each other, which makes us talk here of a potential of 20 trillion and the US GDP today is 21 trillion just for reference we are talking of a potential of 20 trillion as costs go down not just that but let's look again at behavior and psychology during recessions usually people are more willing to change their behavior and we are in a recession iron prices has gone down 36 percent uh, probably due, due to china and evergrande then baltic fried dry index is down 39 percent DRAM down 27 percent lumber down 35 percent even oil is down which usually was an outlier so her point, innovation stocks are not in a bubble, they are in deep value territory. And uh, yes, people are going to broad-based equity because they want to play it safe over the next months, okay. But yeah, at their own peril because they will not catch the rebound. So we have basically the chance to go long-term and catch the rebound, accepting short-term losses. Um, and, and we have now more, more data. 
uh, to take that decision. Equity Benchmark are selling at record high prices in near high valuation 26 times and 127 times. That's the PE ratio. 26 times, 127 times. And in a recession, uh, they historically go down to 6.8%. That's the bubble that she sees, the equities bubble. And on the other side, there is a 200 trillion opportunity in front of us if we just hold those assets who are on the right side of change, then we can expect 30 to 40% compound annual rate. And that would be better than playing in sales because innovation solves real problems that will be delightful as soon as they kick in if we are on the right side of change. Now, I hope you have now a little bit more uh, data to base your decisions on. That means, that means I hope you go to your portfolio construction now and act accordingly. What will be your short-term uh, fast horses? Maybe you, you pick some from our top 10. And then what will be your long-term disruption part of your portfolio? where you know that it takes 5 to 10 years for them to really rebound, but when they do, there might be this opportunity uh, estimated by Katie Woods and her team to be around 200 trillion, which is a very relevant opportunity if you want to be in that game. Hope that helps. Keep rolling, everybody.